Fergus is going to teach us about what we, what we can eat on Oakweir Island. Well, let's start right at our feet then. Yeah. Um, it's always a good place to start. So the first thing we've got is one of the plantain family. Um, and this is one of the smaller ones. And it's either going to be great plantain or hoary plantain. And you can always already feel it's slightly rough. So that's hoary plantain with a distinct ribbing at the back there. It has little flower spikes that have little seeds which, which you, can, you can harvest as well. But the great plantain has larger seed spikes, which makes it really worthwhile to harvest the seeds. But these oh, ones okay. are quite small. Um, it's very good, actually. My friend used this um, as a tea. Um, it's probably about five, six times the amount we see here. Okay. Um, two weeks before the hay fever season, three cups a day, um, and it completely eradicated his hay fever. Oh, so, wow. so that's one of the potential herbal uses. So that's, that's nice. It's a member of the rose family. It's qu quite closely related to strawberry, and it's called wood avens. And you've got these three larger lobe leaves at the top, and then these these pears going down the stem and that's a kind of hairy stem and supposedly you can eat the leaves raw or cooked but they're, they're kind of rubbish Dog, dogs are really attracted to them uh, they just draw dogs like, like a magnet um, the main interest for this is that the roots um, taste just like clove clove okay. so you can infuse them make sugar syrups and cook apple and rice pudding and stuff Oh. So I guess if you really like the flavour of cloves, you could make a, a oh. tea out of the roots. Oh. So, yeah, um, and it has a has a flower. It looks a bit like a buttercup, sort of yellow flower, although it's not in the buttercup family. It's all right, you with me? So this is a really good one to learn because although it looks kind of quite delicious, like a flat leaf parsley or something, yeah. um, this is seriously poisonous. This is called hemlock water dropwort, um, and it's in the carrot family. And it's completely hairless, has a very distinct smell. It's worth snapping off a stem and smelling it. Um, so all parts of the plant are poisonous, but the, the main um, cause of poisonings is the kind of tuberous roots that look a bit like um, um, yams, like quite small yams. And when the, you'll see them when you're going on the river, and particularly when the river drops and the, the roots are exposed out of the bank, yeah. they, they do look kind of tempting. They look oh, quite starchy and big, and you might think that, that's good to eat. But... Um, just a few of those and you'd be, it'd be curtains, so mm. that's, not, that's a, a good one to know. But it does smell quite aromatic. And, oh, um, so what's that called again? It's called hemlock water drop wort. Oh, okay. yeah. And it's one of those things like, you know, books often describe it as having an unpleasant smell, but if I'm with a group and there's ten of us smelling it, at least two are safe. And that's, I love that, that's a lovely smell, so oh. you can't just go on. Oh, okay. that's pleasant on that. But that's a really good one to know. Let's yeah. have a look. Let's have a closer look. Yeah, that's it. So, completely smooth, kind of rounded stem. Mm. It is a bit like carpet. Completely isn't it? hairless. Like carpet. Yeah. And then we've got here, I'm pretty sure is Rose Bay Willow Herb, also known as fireweed. Um, and yeah, you can eat this raw cooked, but it has a slightly nasty aftertaste. Um, I don't like it, but very, very common on um, kind of riversides. And ditches and ponds and stuff yeah. Grow, grows to about, about that big oh with wow big kind of purple flowers um probably the classic wild food stinging nettles mm. which are wonderful in all sorts of ways teas in soups um raw blitzed up um it's even one of the plants i extract the protein from the leaf because it's quite high in protein Is that's, it? that's a bit of a mission to do that um, so can you blitz it up into a shake yeah, I, I have it as a smoothie most do often. You? Yeah, yeah. So, so how do you make make that? Is that like so? so I was, what I do, I, so, so I pick these off. Yeah. Um, I have about twenty to forty of those. Yeah. And I blitz it up with dandelion, goose grass, another yeah. plant we we'll probably see, um, um, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, a bit of salt. Oh. Um, sometimes some avocado, sometimes some tofu. Depends how thick I want it. Um, a bit of carrot. Oh. So, you know, just okay. blitz it up. That's nice. Um, also, it's very good if you uh, deep fry it for about five seconds. Deep fry oh, okay. it, absorbent paper, bit of salt, nice crispy little snack. This looks like some kind of comfrey. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. There's quite a few types of comfrey, so I'm not actually yeah. sure which one. I'll tell you what's really good for comfrey, as I discovered this in the Highlands the other year. Um, I was wearing a waterproof jacket and I had a hole in it, hold with rain. 
and we discovered that where is it it just sticks like this so <laughs> you can put it under your clothes where you've got a hole um, yeah. so comfrey very, very good velcro. for that it's like velcro. yeah it's like velcro you, you can eat it but mm, it's good. the traditional thing is to, to batter it um, yeah, that's but it, it has pyrolysine alkaloids in the leaves, which, um, if you eat it, it builds up cumulatively. So you wouldn't want to make soup and have it every day; It'd be a problem okay. um, for your liver. But this is a very young bit of meadow sweet. Um, now, the, the interesting thing about this is, if you forget the the, uh, the shape of the leaves, the arrangement of the leaves, um, and everything, if you just smell the roots. And think of the smell of germaline or TCP, you'll know that you've got meadow sweet. Should we just have a little bit, just sacrifice a little bit for the sake of knowing? If you get right down into the root, yeah, you really get. I can smell it straight away, yeah. Kind of germaline. germaline. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is colt's foot. Colt's foot. Colt's foot. So, oh. um, has a dandelion like flower, it's in the daisy family. All members of the daisy family often have these composite flowers. Um, think kind of dandelion and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so you might have heard of colt's foot like um, lozenges, like as cough sweets. Mm. So that, mm. that's kind of the main use for them. But you can you can cook all of this um, when it's the, the flowers before it's before it's opened. You can use the flowers for tea and and uh, making wine. And the leaves, these young tender leaves, you can cook as well. Very good to know. Um, and there's there's little bits dotted around. It's called um, Arum maculatum is the botanical. Maculatum meaning spotted, but it doesn't always have this spotted aspect. Um, cuckoo flower or Jack in the pulpit or what's the other name for it? For it? Cuckoo flower, oh. Jack in the pulpit. It's got so many names. Um, yeah, the leaves of this. The, 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 the big. Oh, here's another one. The, the biggest problem here is that. You can find this growing in the same situation as um, common sorrel, wild sorrel, which looks very similar. Um, now the problem is, you wouldn't think these are the same plant, would you? No. They're exactly the same plant. Um, is that they contain calcium oxalate in the form of rapids, which are tiny microscopic crystals. So if you eat this leaf, that, those crystals are getting your mucous membranes in your tongue. The worst that could happen. Um, is your whole head was your whole tongue and mouth will swell up and you go into anaphylactic shock. Um, that's the worst. Yeah. Um, the best that can happen is uh, even just chewing that bit. Is your your after about 10 seconds your lip your tongue will be burning like with like pins and needles for about two hours and you can't wash it away. Oh. Um, so it's not good. <laughs> um, and anyway, um, but the problem is it looks very much like common sorrel, yeah. which can grow in the same habitat. The key consideration is is that on this one. I mean, there's other botanical details, but a really good one to know is, oh, this one's, because it's only, oh, this, this is better. Is? As you want to look at this border, you see this vein, it's called an astomosing vein, which means it turns in on itself, so, and it leaves oh, this kind yeah. of border around the leaf. Yeah, I can see that. So any, if you see leaves growing like this, in this situation, and it has that border, don't eat it. If it doesn't have that border, and it has this same kind of lobing, slightly more pointed at the bottom it's almost 99% going to be common sorrel which is good to eat oh. um, so remember the vein avoid okay. really avoid particularly um, good in the, in the winter but not my favorite daisy to eat my, my favorite daisy leaf would be oxide daisy you know the one you often mm, see at the side of roads yeah. side of roads mm, big yeah. days, daisy um, but yeah you can eat, eat the leaf high in vitamin c and all this kind of thing um, here we've got Dandelion, dandelion we could talk about for about an hour because there's so much you can do with it. So every part of the dandelion is edible, although please don't quote me on this because I'm the only person I know that's experimented extensively with the seeds. Um, so yeah, you can eat the root. The root is, is good dug virtually any time of the year, but ideally at, at its best when it's not in flower. Um, the flowers are on single stalks, unlike many other plants where you get similar ones that you possibly might confuse that have multiple flowers coming off the one stem. So we've got the, in the spring, we've got the root we could dig up, we've got the leaf that we could use in salad, slightly bitter. You don't like the bitterness, as soon as you see them coming up, you can just put a board on them for a couple of weeks 
mm. make them slightly yellowish to be blanched so the sun's not getting there. Um, then, um, later on, kind of in February, when you've got tight buds down in the bottom like that, you'll get about five or six of these buds and you can gouge that whole thing out, the top of the root, and cook that as a vegetable. That's nice. Later on, when they've, they've got little stalks are about that big, you can peel them off, off the calyx, this bottom bit around the immature flower, and pickle those. That's quite good. Um, you can carry on, carry on using the leaves. When the flower comes out, um, you can. The best thing you can do. I picked it now. Is there another one? There we are. The best thing you can do, but you've got to wait till it's full sun for this, and do them fresh because they close up after a couple of hours. Is put them in a, a light batter, deep fry them the golden brown bit of salt pepper lovely really good mm. um, that's, that's really nice um, then you can use the petals for tea for jams for cordials uh, for just garnishing salads all sorts of things and finally and i've been doing this for the last um four days you see see this oh, yeah. area there it, this latex in there is good for treating warts so oh. every time i think about it i put a little bit on because I've got a, a suspected wart here. So just let that dry. And finally, when you've made your dandelion tea, cordial, wine, whatever, you get your long dandelion stalk and you use it as a straw to drink it. So yeah, there's so much you can do with dandelion. dotted around is common thistle or spear thistle. Now you could eat all of this, but the only way you can really make this leaf work is if you blitz it up and extract the green and if you're making it into pasta or something to give it some nice colour. Oh. As a vegetable you really have, you'd have to pick out all these little thorny bits. Oh. Um, so the main edible use of this and at this time of the year is the root which is quite good. Um, although like many wild roots it contains inulin like Jerusalem artichokes so that makes you fart quite a lot. Oh. Um, but it's also very good for your intestinal flora. Um, That's a member of the mint family we've seen. So, so square, hairy square stem, opposite leaves. Um, yeah, it's where you can smell it from here. This is called ale hoof or ground ivy, and traditionally used for flavouring ale. Um, I use it for when I'm making nettle, um, nettle beer. It's very good as a flavouring. It's slightly bitter, but that's, that smell that. That's in small quantities, mm. you could put it in a salad, particularly if you find it in, in woodland, because it grows in woodland as well. Um, in fact, mainly in, in woodland and on the edges of woodland. And when it grows in woodland, the leaves can be up to about that size because of the shade. And that, mm. that's something that often confuses people looking at wild plants, just mm. the variation in growth form when mm. because of the different amounts of light. Oh, I see. So, this one's quite small here, isn't this it? One, yeah, but I've, in, in really absolutely exposed sun, yeah, it can be, so they're, they're kind of like this. Yeah, this is quite typical. It does, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. In, in the woodland, this will be a trailing plant um, oh, okay. with, with bigger leaves. It's got blue, purpley flowers, isn't it? Yeah. And the flowers are quite distinctive. Yeah. They're very, yeah. very pretty flowers. Yeah, so, yeah. a few of those on a salad. No, That's I'm a big fan of garnishing salads with flowers. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyone yeah, with the, the white flowers one, doesn't Lauren. sting. Yeah. This one with the pixies hanging So this, this is in the dead, dead nettle family. Um, the dead nettle family and the mint family are very closely related to each other. Hence the square stem, hairy stem, and opposite leaves. Um, you can use this in a salad, in in small quantities, simply because it doesn't have much flavour and it's not the best flavour anyway. Um, the most traditional use, and you read this in books, it's always con con country children, country folk, <laughs> uh, will take these, particularly when it, on a sunny day, when these are all in flowers. Very sweet. Yeah, yeah, there's a little nectary at the bottom of that, so there's a tiny, yeah, yeah, there's a tiny bit of sweetness in there, but they're just coming out. So again, good for garnishing salads, and it has has herbal usage as well. So burdock. So this will be its first year of growth. It's a it's a biennial, so taking two years to grow. So you kind of really need to know that when you're harvesting roots, particularly. So this would have the leaves would have fallen in the the seed would have fallen in the autumn. So this has started growing this spring, and the root on this one is probably going to be about that long. Um, yeah, possi possibly about that thick, maybe thinner. Um, it, it varies a lot, but the root, the main, the main edible part of this is the root. 
dandelion and burdock beer, mm. dandelion and burdock tea, dandelion, this kind of thing. Um, it's a very good root. It's one of my favourite roots actually, because on a on a on a large plant, um, the root can be that thick at the top and it can go down. Oh like wow! That. Um, it's a mission to to dig up, but there are yeah. various ways. But perhaps, perhaps the most exciting thing about this plant, though, and this is probably my favourite use for it, is on its second year of growth in May, when it's about this high, and you've got the central flower stem that can be about that thick. Um, you get it, and where, where you can bend it at, at 90 degrees without 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 any oh it's not going to happen but it's like that it remains flexible. Um, but below but on the on this main stem, there's be a point where it just distorts and it won't go back. That's what you don't want. But above that, where it's flexible, you cut it and you peel it back, and you can get the central cores about that long, about that thick, and they taste just like marrow. Um, mm. Or you can grate them and put them in coleslaw, or you can, um, yeah, just put them raw in salads, or you can candy them, um, a bit of ginger and vanilla or something, and sugar. That's nice. Mm. All sorts of things you can do. But it, or just eat them raw as a snack. Just peel it back. It's, it's probably the best plant stem in, in terms of being very common and a lot of food material there. So really worthwhile. Um, mm. But it will turn brown on exposure to air. But that's nothing to worry about. But. Mm. Yes, one here. Particularly because, I mean, I haven't seen any um, wild garlic, like Ramson's bear garlic, growing here. Um, but wherever, in, in woodland where there's lots of wild garlic, this bear's garlic, watch the, the, the poo there. Um, yeah, you know. And uh, oh. you often find this plant called dog's mercury growing amongst it. Um, and this is, this is a nasty poisonous plant, so but very distinctive at this time of the year because you've got the, the flower mm. stems um, which can become the seed pods. Just They grow on these long stalks mm. that arise between the, the, the leaf stem and the main stem. So it's very distinctive. Dog's mercury. One, one to avoid. Can you eat that yeah, one? Sticky willy, sticky William. Well this stuck down in the southeast. This will start growing in November. Yeah. Um, oh. And when it's young it's worth using as soup um, in soup. Um, this is one of the things that I blend up. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be very good for your complexion. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh...